Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to share some tips on how to style a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing bookshelf. So whether you have built-ins or whether you are working with one or two little shelves in your room, these tips apply to anyone. So tip number one would be to choose a color palette. And choosing a color palette really helps to keep things looking cohesive and very organized. Tip number two would be to personalize your shelves. Now you definitely want to bring in items that you love, that are personal to you. They could be things that you do for a hobby. They can just be things, maybe momentums, picture frames, things of that nature that you want to incorporate some of those pieces onto the shelves. You can start doing this by finding objects within your home, or if you wanted to freshen up your space, and you're tired of just the same things that you have at home, then take a trip to your local thrift store if you have one and look for items that um, will work for your bookshelf. Some of the things that I look out for when I am thrifting and I'm going to you know, restyle a bookshelf, keep in mind the colors that I'm going to be adding to this bookshelf. So some of the things that I also find interesting when I am thrifting is looking for black or white books because personally my bookshelves are black, white, and beige. So those are the tones that I'm going for. I always look for the hardcover um, books and normally they are in a bin for 99 cents. So I normally score very well at my local thrift store um, with these books. I also look for pottery, statues, bowls, things that look vintage and have the color that will work within my shelves. You know, anything that is really personal to your taste and style will work. So let's go back in time when I pre-recorded a little segment of me showing the bookshelves. Now here's a better example of the bookshelf. Um, it's pretty tall. Um, it's about 10 or 11 feet up high. And we have one, two, three, four times three. So that's 12 shelves that we are going to organize today. Tip number three would be to consider height and symmetry. I tend to use the books and the objects to sort of balance each other out. I create highs and lows just to really um, bring the eye right to that shelf. Tip number four would be to pull back and make sure that you are observing your work. There's nothing more than like getting through your whole project and then you step back and it's still not to your liking because sometimes when we are so close to something, it looks great, but when you pull back, that's when you really see the full picture. So make sure that you're taking frequent breaks so that you can either add or take away items as you see necessary. So remember guys, there is really no right or wrong way to decorate or style a bookshelf. It is definitely all up to you and your personal taste and style and color choices. So just have fun with it. These tips are just a little guide for you to sort of use if you will. I am not a professional. This is just personally how I've styled my bookshelves and I'm passing it on to you. So that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video soon. Oh my gosh, this is heavy. <laughs> so this is everything that I was able to score from one thrift store. Um, I kind of was tired um, and I felt like I had enough stuff to kind of like do what we need to do for today. And this is just to sort of give you the gist of like what I look out for when I'm shopping. And I don't necessarily always shop at the thrift stores. I just find the best, most interesting things are found at the thrift store. And I love the vintage flair to things, you know, um, I feel like a lot of decor that is new today always stems from something from the past. So whenever we shop, I always see something that looks vintage and it's like, I can find that at the thrift store. But um, anyway, let me unbag 
if you will, um, the goodies that I found and I wanted to show you how I shop for my personal style and um, how you can shop for your personal style. So, so the first thing that I do when I'm looking at stuff at a store, any store, is to keep in mind my color choice. My color choice is really going to be sort of um, the theme throughout the bookshelves. So, and if you like color, by all means, you can buy whatever colors you like and still use the same principle. But I like to keep my bookshelves pretty neutral and there are certain objects that I maybe want to pop out. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna get, <laughs> hopefully that didn't break. We're gonna get to all of that. So let me see, what do we have here? This is always the fun part. This is my favorite part of the video. I swear I'd skip to like everything and just get right to this part. That's what I do personally. Don't do that on my video. Okay, so I got this, um, you saw me pull this beautiful crystal dish. Um, these are actually little serving dishes. They probably used this somewhere in the period of 1950s and 60s. Um, like some relishes maybe were here and maybe some hors d'oeuvres or something to that effect. And this is really beautiful. So you're saying, what am I gonna do with this? So again, I love using beautiful pieces like this to like maybe store some jewelry. I would lay down like gold necklaces and some rings. It's a really pretty catch all. And when the light hits it just right, it just looks so, so beautiful. Um, you can leave it just as it is, you know, as it glistens, it just really picks up a nice sort of texture as the light hits it. And so these are a winner for me. I'm always looking out for beautiful trays and, you know, um, interesting little marble trays. So we got that. I also picked up this, oh, and by the way, this was $4. And then this one is another little catch-all. I just love the little round shape and it's super small. Um, this one was $2 and these are all crystal, by the way. Um, so this is a really good deal for crystal, $2. Now normally if it was glass, I wouldn't pay more than like 50 cents for this at the thrift store, but this was $2 because it is real crystal and it's heavy. So um, I would probably, again, just use this as it is or put some rings in here maybe some lipsticks. Um, we're gonna play and I'll show you how to, how to get that guy looking cute, okay? So I guess this is the glass bag. No wonder this one was the heaviest bag. So you saw me pick these up and they may or may not work for the bookcase, but I'm just gonna show you anyway. This was, these are crystal um, candle holders. And wow, the light is like really picking these guys up really well. They're super heavy. Now they do make these in glass, but these are legit crystal. Um, and the reason why I know that is because there's weight and just the overall feel of the quality of the glass, of the crystal. Um, these were $7 for the pair. So they may, again, may or may not work in the bookcase. We will try to see, you know, the flow, but I couldn't pass these up. They're crystal vintage candle holders. Holidays are coming up. They will definitely make a place somewhere in the home. So that was a nice score. Love that. So that's it for this bag. Oh, maybe not. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's a little baby dish. Look how small. So here's the, I don't know if you can compare in size. I even like just stacking them just like that. I think that they're pretty cool. Just, can you guys see me? I feel like I put the camera up too high. But um, just stacking them like that just looks so pretty. So there's that. I'm gonna push these guys over and make room for the new stuff. Okay, in this bag is a black, sort of bowl, kind of looks like a dog bowl now that I'm like really looking at it. But when I was at the thrift store, I turned it upside down, which I always do. Takes me back to the days when I used to sell on eBay full time, hundreds of years ago. And um, this is made by Hager USA. 
it is a very, very well-known um, and well-loved pottery maker. And these were very popular back in the 1950s. So this is an authentic um, 1950s Hager bowl. I paid $5 for it. There's no chips. Um, there's just a little kind of flaking on the bottom, but I'm not concerned about that because no one's gonna see that. Now, you could very well use this and put a beautiful plant in there or fill it with soil and add some succulents. Like that, that'll be really pretty. Um, and honestly, when I picked it up, I think I picked it up more so because it was a Hagar because I didn't really like think about what am I gonna use this for, but we'll figure it out. Let's, this is gonna make its way back here behind me. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with this. Um, so I'm pretty excited because I really love just the shape of it and the glossiness of it. And I think it's gonna really bring a nice pop to the bookshelf. Okay, next bag is, <laughs> I paid a dollar for this basket. And I think I almost put it back at the register because I'm like, well, what am I gonna put in here? But I really like the shape of it. It has like this weird cylinder dome shape. Again, you can put a plant in here, succulents in here. Um, I may put some dry flowers in here. So my wheels are turning, I'm not quite certain. It may or may not make the shelf, but I wanted to show you guys for a dollar, I had to have it. It'll make some place in my home really cute. I'm just not sure if it's gonna make the bookshelf. I love this. This is, I found this and I was like, oh my goodness. They're selling these at like Urban Outfitters for like $20, $30. And this one I paid $2 for and it's real metal. It's made from the Bombay company, which is I believe no longer um, a retail store. They may have an online shop now. I'm not 100% certain about that, but I love it so much. It I'm totally into like the seashell thingies. Um, I don't know why, I just think they're so cool and I love the brass. I have a lot of brass in my home and so this can very well just sit there with some beautiful, laying on top of some beautiful books. Um, this is definitely making the back shelf, so stay tuned for that. Okay, again, not sure if I'm, this is going to make the back shelf, but I had to get this and I'm sure you're excited to see what I get anyway. So this is a huge piece of marble. I paid $2 for it. Actually, Kelsey found this and I was like, yes, 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 let's get it. Because even if it doesn't make the shelf, this will look pretty on the dresser with necklaces sort of laid across or some rings or some bracelets. Um, it has the shape of like a flower pot, but you know, once it's laid flat, it's really, it's just so pretty. And it could have been used as a cutting board once upon a time, I'm not sure, but it's real deal. It's a heavy piece of marble. And nowadays when I go to boutiques and I find pieces of marble, they are sometimes hundreds of dollars. Um, I recently went to this one shop in New York looking for an interesting piece of marble and it was like $149 for something very similar in size. And I may be mistaken, but I think I saw also some marble being sold at Anthropology for $100 and up. So I got mine for $2. <laughs> okay. Set that down carefully. This bag. Okay. So that is it for the goodies. Um, but I wound up finding tons of books. Let me explain the books a little bit. Not that I'm going to show you each book, but. I wanna say something about these books. Um, if you caught it in the beginning when I was pulling them, I buy the hardcover ones. Um, I turn them around this way. And sometimes these are just, you know, really, really old books from like the 80s, 70s. Sometimes they're the old encyclopedias. Um, I normally try to keep them to the same size. So, you know, I try to like do that kind of stuff. None of these books go together. They're just, again, I pick them for their color and for their size. So then we use them like that. Another tip that I do with books is if you really wanted to do a little bit more rustic sort of touch, which I was almost gonna do this, but I held off 
and I'm still kind of thinking about it, is ripping, ripping the covers off and just using just the raw um, pages to sort of like give you those tan and taupey tones. And I think that's really cool. I may do that. Um, and third tip for the books is you really can't stand the, you wanted to put your books this way then, and you wanted them cohesive. Sometimes finding a whole collection of books, the same color is extremely difficult. Um, if you do find them, you're going to pay hundreds of dollars for a collection of books. So what you can do is get yourself a bottle of spray paint of whatever color you want your bookshelves to be. In my case, I would spray paint these white. And if I was concerned of putting my books this way, I would spray paint all of these white and that way you have all white border um, across your shelves. But I really love these tones, these taupey, beigey tones. So I'm gonna keep my books this way or this way. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's some other books in the back. So I have tons of books to fill this bookshelf. And then we're gonna use the accessories to sort of really make a beautiful curated aesthetic 